Hello and welcome to Sherbrooke Mennonite Church. Thank you for joining us and watching the service. I hope and pray that this service would be a blessing to you and that you would hear the Lord as he speaks through the music and the message. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we meet together on this first Sunday after Christmas, we, we thank you for the gift that is your son that you gave to us, that you sent to earth. As we, as we continue today and reflect on, reflect on this year and look ahead to the coming year, I ask that you would open our hearts and open our ears and open our eyes to what you have for us today and reveal your presence to us in our homes. Be with us as we worship. We pray this in your name. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature and sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and
Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it was written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Good morning. This is the last Sunday of 2020. This is a year like none other, a year that we've had to come to anticipate things or learn things that we had not expected to learn about. Like, for instance, the first thing we learned about was the coronavirus. The coronavirus was was already, uh, you know, in our awareness in China in the early part of the year, but it was only in March, middle of March, where everything changed, where we all of a sudden had the coronavirus spreading in British Columbia and we had to learn about social distancing and it didn't take long and we realized that social distancing probably especially in a Christian context but just as humans together is better said as physical distancing while continuing to socially connect in creative and interesting ways. We went through a good part of the year uh, doing physical distancing and and uh, as in the fall the um, uh, infections started to really get worse and uh, transmission started to get worse. Uh, we then started wearing masks. Like many people were debating wearing masks and all of a sudden we just had to wear them. I mean, everybody wearing masks as soon as you go into any public space. And we learned that that's okay and we're good with that. Then we learned to stay home, just to do stuff from home stuff that we never expected we'd have to do from home, like church today, uh, just like family get togethers at Christmas time where we're asked to stay within our bubble, stay within our immediate family home. And uh, if we're single within the bubble that we have. And so we learned that this is okay and this will be okay for the next little while. But, and we've also learned uh, from Dr. Henry that it won't be forever. And we trust that with the, with the um, vaccines being available now and more and more vaccines becoming available and with uh, hopefully the curve flattening a bit because we are staying at home and even summer coming spring, maybe even around Easter, uh, we hope that we'll be able to start being together in person again. One of the unexpected pieces, at least for me, unexpected pieces during this same time as the pandemic is 
the uh, racism that arose. The, at the same time as the pandemic, we had some murders that took place because of police brutality and this uprising of resistance to these kind of racist um, experiences. Uh, things like Black Lives Matter became a thing. We, we would think people talk about all lives mattering, but when there's oppression, there are people who don't seem to matter. And whether it's black people or people of color or indigenous people, the call to say that all of these people who are oppressed need to matter and uh, that there is no peace if there is no justice for all people. And just saying no to racism became a piece that's part of this whole story that we've been walking through during these times. Well, how do we see God's story in this past year? Uh, as our form, our story has been formed, how do we see God's story in the midst of our story? Uh, the Bible is filled with stories where God is interacting with his people. Uh, this past year has revealed God's activity. Maybe we haven't seen it so regularly, but this past year has shown us that God is still active as well. And we can recall times, hopefully we can recall times where our stories have become enriched and we can be thankful uh, by the things that have happened this past year. What stories have do you have to tell that would be uh, where God has been active in your life? We'll give opportunity in the uh, sermon reflections time after the service for you to share some of the stories of struggle as well as some of the stories of experiencing God. If I would say anything about how I've experienced God in this past year, uh, I would say that these Zoom services, these Zoom, Zoom church services have become meaningful for me. In fact, they've become, uh, actually I've come to love these services where we can actually see each other face to face without wearing a mask and covering half of our face while we're uh, in person with each other. Um, so that's been good. Uh, we can now look forward to the next year and we look forward to the new year and hopefully see what God is drawing us into for his future and what he has got laid out for us. And we can be confident that God will continue to reveal himself to us and God will continue to patiently invite us into what God is doing. God's purposes cannot be stopped. Well, the pathway that we often enjoyed walking, Diane and myself, is on the road to Roberts Bank, and it's it's the dike, and and uh, this is the pathway uh, that we're looking at here. Uh, walking the road of revelation results in overwhelming joy, and uh, the waiting is over. Advent is over. Jesus has come. We rejoice that God in the flesh has come. God is with us, Emmanuel. God has come. And we can decide how, if and how, we will join God in responding to Emmanuel, God with us. And the invitations to join God's story. Um, or we can remain on the sidelines and continue to um, stay out of the opportunities that God puts before us. Mary and Joseph moved forward into their future with Jesus and it was all new for them as well. Like they had to try new things. They had to step into new pathways that they had never been on before. We want to look at our scripture text from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40, and some of the highlights of what this, these first steps of this journey looked like uh, with Jesus uh, for Mary and Joseph. So Mary and Joseph, uh, after 40 days, and it's 40 days, especially for boys, 40 days until the purification writes the purification time happens Luke chapter 2 verse 22 when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord um, we see a couple of photos here of, of how this is depicted the purification experience from an African perspective this photo is from Senegal or the purification experience from uh, a Latino exp expression in Eastern Texas uh, in the U.S. Uh, verses 25 to 38 of our passage present two pious figures that come uh, to the temple 
under the divine inspiration, they'd come to testify of the significance of Jesus. Luke is very careful in his gospel to show that these people have credentials, credentials to say that Jesus is the Messiah. He takes care to show that each of these witnesses is an authentic representative of the Jewish faith community. In verse 25, we're introduced to uh, Simeon. And it, the first word is now. Here he is uh, in other translations, uh, it would say, behold, here he is, here is this man. And, and the important thing is that Simeon was righteous and devout, it says in verse 25. He had been waiting for the consolation of Israel, which means the fulfillment of the hope of the coming of the Messiah. And he had been told that um, he would see the Messiah in his life. Uh, verses 26 through 28, the Spirit had revealed to Simeon that the Messiah would come during his lifetime. Luke 2 verse 27 says, Moved by the Spirit, Simeon went to the, into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Uh, it's providential timing that uh, as the Spirit brings Simeon to the temple courts, the family arrives at the same time, and he's ready there waiting for them. Luke, uh, the next passage, the next verses, 28 and 29, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant into peace. Here's a depiction of Simeon holding the baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph being there, uh, and uh, <laughs> Joseph, uh, or sorry, Simeon now says, hey, I am ready to die. I have met all the requirements for my life. I have held the Messiah and experienced the presence of God in the Messiah, as I had been told I would. Simeon does not say that he has seen the Messiah, but he actually says rather he, that his eyes have seen God's salvation. His eyes have seen God's salvation. To see Jesus is to see salvation embodied in him, which is the theme that is prominent throughout all of the Gospel of Luke. In verse 31, it talks about all nations, all peoples. It's kind of like the idea of all um uh, like I kind of the, the idea of our indigenous people, the First Nations people, when they talk about nation, they're talking about a people, not a country, uh, uh, you know, like, like Canada or the United States, but a nation, a peoplehood, like the Jewish people or like the Hebrew people or like the um, Greek people or like, you know, uh, the Tawasan First Nation people, a peoplehood uh, that is being talked about here. So in spite of what they had already known, Joseph and Mary are amazed at Simeon's song. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. Luke 2 verses 30 to 32. The story of the child will bring uh, deep anguish as well. This is not just a happy story, but this is a story that will also bring deep anguish. Then Simeon said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined to cause the fall, falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be the sign, uh, to be a sign that will be spoken against. So this is this is the reality of uh, of what was to be expected, um, and then continuing on verse thirty five, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your soul, your own soul too. Both the the sword would pierce the side of Jesus, the sword would pierce the soul of Mary. And here we have this picture of uh, Mary listening carefully to Simeon as he tells her uh, what what this experience is going to be like. And, and she's uh, you can tell the 
depth of, of uh, reception of these words from Simeon. There was also the prophet Anna. She was very old. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day fa with uh, fasting and prayer. Luke's attention to the renewal of prophecy uh, again is, is here as he introduces Anna. Uh, it's at the coming age of the Messiah. It continues to introduce people of significance. And here's Anna, a prophet who's introduced. It's the same name. She has the same name as Hannah as in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 2, meaning the meaning of the name is gracious. Um, Anna is a gracious person and has been also waiting to be present here. In verse 38, it says, At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. Anna praised God for the child Jesus, as Hannah had praised God for the child Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. Zechariah had been filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied in Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And Simeon, who we've just heard about, uh, though not called a prophet, was filled with the Spirit as he also prophesied. And so we have the presentation of Jesus uh, at the temple. Once again, Luke points to the providential timing of all of these people to confirm that Jesus is the Messiah. Luke chapter 2 verse 39, when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Luke takes a, a, a another opportunity to mention the fidelity of Jesus' parents to the Jewish law, that they have followed the Jewish law carefully and that um, now they're going home to Nazareth. It's an interesting gap here. If you went to Matthew, if we went to the Gospel of Matthew, there's a whole other story that fits right into this gap in the middle of verse 39 from when they were at the temple for the purification to going home to Nazareth. And it's the story from Matthew 2 verses 1 to 23 where the visit of the Magi happened and the escape to Egypt took place. In fact, there could be a couple of years that would have been fit in between in this gap. And some of the commentators say, well, uh, maybe Mary, Joseph and Jesus went to Nazareth right from right at the, you know, after the 40 days um, uh, and after the presentation at the temple and and and, and came back to meet the Magi in Bethlehem uh, later on. Or um, Luke may have just left that piece out and in the middle of this verse skips ahead years uh, to the time when they're returning from Egypt and on their way to Nazareth as recorded in Matthew. So it's just interesting that these two records uh, have different details that they emphasize. But we have then the Holy Family, uh, the young boy Jesus uh, growing up with Mary and Joseph in Nazareth in their home. God acts in history, bringing his future into sight. We have looked back to see what God has done in order to have confidence about God's continued presence in our future. Are we going to turn towards God or are we going to pursue our own self-centered agendas? There is joy and fulfillment when we welcome God to fulfill our lives and to be at the center of our lives. What hopes for the future uh, indicate how God is drawing us? What, what are we seeing already to where God is drawing us into 2021? What commitments are we going to make as we start a new year together? Let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for the hope of this new year coming, especially after this very challenging year of 2020. Um, we ask, Lord, that in 2021 we would see you in refreshing ways and uh, that we would continue to be disciplined in responding to the realities of COVID-19. And as we hopefully move forward into a new day, a new ability to be present with each other, uh, that you would bless and help us to be a blessing to others. Help us to carry your good news 
the good news of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us through the remainder of this year and into the next. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Just going to say that uh, as Devin and I were reflecting on a couple of songs that we might do today, um, there was a traditional Christmas carol and then there was this one. And I was looking at the words and I was just struck by the words, uh, his love is strong enough to lead us as I was thinking about the next year. And it just that came to me over and over again that his love is strong enough to lead us. And I said, yes, let's go with this one. <laughs> Um, so let maybe we let that that thought that phrase uh, rest with us or or sink into us that his love is strong enough to lead us and uh, carry us into this year ahead.
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Amen.